G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, over the years I've reviewed a lot of stuff, quite a lot of stuff for various companies. And uh, one thing I've never reviewed, even though I've looked at them long and hard many, many times, are those um, handheld portable band saws. The metal cutting, well mainly metal cutting band saws. They've been around for quite a long time. There's countless reviews on them out there, and that's the reason I haven't reviewed them because I tend to review stuff which has got limited video out there and give people a, you know, a look at the stuff. So in this case, I just, you know, wondered about them. In, in, I thought it'd be nice to try one, but never went down that path. And then the other day I was watching a video, and it was Kev from Mr. Fat Totem's workshop. And Kev was using one of these, the hacksaw, the trusty old hacksaw, to cut some cast iron for a, um, a project he was working on. I mean, these are super handy, you know, really, I mean very versatile but of course these days you've got all these electronic power tools that can do the same sort of job yeah, up to a point in certain situations now what Kev was doing he was cutting some square cast iron and he wasn't cutting it right through he was cutting in cutting sections out of it now a lot of these metal cutting band saws come on a base, they pivot and makes it accurate and easy to, to cut stuff but you, you, the problem is you get an angle cut, they can't cut like a guillotine, they can't cut on a horizontal, not unless you tilt the, the job and the saw and I've got a, a big metal cutting band saw um, I had for a long time and occasionally I've tr done jobs in it and I've cut on an angle, moved the job, blocked it up and, and managed to cut it fairly, fairly square but this, this, this is the sort of work where a hacksaw or something like a hacksaw can do a much better job, more accurate. So, you know, while people were sort of going, oh, okay, you know, you should hit the 21st century sort of thing, he was doing it for a reason, a very, very good reason and the job turned out really well. And he put up his muscle tone at the same time. Anyway, moving on. So I thought, OK, let's get one of these and have a look at it. Using it as a sort of a... For jobs that you would do with a, a hacksaw like that, where you want to get high accuracy, you know, cut dead level, dead horizontal, square cuts. We'll see how it works bit different to what everybody else has done. Everybody seems to just rev them up and see how fast they'll cut. But there's more to that than, uh, you know, most workshops need. You've got to have a bit of accuracy. Anyway, I'll be keen to try it out and see what it looks like. So we'll, we'll open it up and give it a go. Like all Vivor's stuff, it's always well packaged. Very well packaged. Okay, so we've got a blade. Yeah, it looks about uh, 14 TPI. 14 TPI. Now these are bimetal too, so that's uh, yeah. That's the what you want. They last longer. Oh, there she is. That's okay, let's unwrap the baby. Now, I could have got the same unit with a base, but not much point. I mean, I've got a chop saw. These are 
better than a chopster in some ways because you don't get all those sparks flying everywhere, so there's no fire hazard. The base would have been okay, but I thought, well, I'll just get a... F that is the basic unit, just as people, you know, on a budget would buy it. I've got chop saws and I've got metal cutting band saws, on, you know, big ones, and I don't really need another pivoting type saw. Yeah, it's handy, I suppose, but you're going to pay, you know, about 110 bucks extra to get this with the base. You know, most people would just be happy with this, I think. All right. Moving on. Okay. So you get one blade, which I showed you earlier. It's the uh, the only blade. There's not one fitted, so you have to fit that yourself. You get Allen keys, which will make that happen, or allow that to happen. You get a manual written in the Queen's English well, well it's the King's English now and uh, yeah seems to be pretty comprehensive I can get it open show you all the bits and pieces and how to put the blade on and yeah all that stuff okay so that's what we'll do we'll put the blade on then now this weighs 8 kilograms, that's pretty manageable, that's a good weight. And looking at it, yeah, it's all aluminium pretty much. It's got a, uh, an adjustable stop here, which has to be tightened up. And uh, yeah, got a good length of cord here, about a metre I suppose, the usual length, so that's good. Quite a good quality heavy cord. And uh, now it's a matter of put the blade on. So, how do we do that? We read the instructions, of course, Rob. Okay, so obviously the covers have got to come off, but. There's a held on with Phillips head screws, and we don't have a Phillips head screwdriver in the kit. We'll have to get one from the toolbox, so maybe they should include a, a screwdriver. Luckily, I have a screwdriver. Now, I presume that uh, this one comes out. And we get the Vegemite jar lid to put the bits in so we don't lose them. So we take out that screw there and then it, it sort of pivots around and comes off. The instructions should really explain that but they don't. Anyway, we'll do the other end now. Okay, so the direction of rotation is that way so the teeth have got to be on the outside. Okay, so I put it in through the rollers first, I think. That would be the way it would go. Yes. Yes. And then back through there like that. And then we adjust the tensioning lever. In the end here. That looks good, we'll just try it carefully. We check that tensioning layer. Yeah. seems to be pretty good quality it's certainly the plastics and everything are good and solid and it's got a light here too it's lighting up more pinky so this we want adjusting so we'll adjust that right down I think
I see it's got replaceable brushes, which is a good feature. It looks a pretty damn good unit. Mmm! Looking good. The variable speed control on this is a is through a wheel, so it's not through the trigger, which is a good thing. It means you can actually set the speed. Also, uh, it'll draw less uh, amperage, so it'll be it'll lower the wattage of the motor as you uh, go lower, so that basically. On the lower settings, you should be able to run this off of an inverter or a uh, power brick. Uh, you know, I've got a 600 watt inverter and a 600 watt power brick, so I expect that you can run it on the lower speed settings, probably up to four, almost certainly three, and uh, it won't trip the breaker on the power brick because. Um, it was just run at a slower speed, use less, um, less amperage. Yeah, very handy. Quite controllable. There you go. That was pretty light gauge too. You know, went through quickly. You have to be careful. So you can get it pretty right. Slight overshoot there. I mean for this sort of work where you're going to be say welding a bit of overshoot won't matter. Overshoot shouldn't happen with a muscle powered uh, hacksaw but it um, just depends how accurate you want it. Now I kept the speed down on that steel because if you go too fast you just tear up your blade. I spoke to a saw doctor years ago and I said, you know, what's the best way to preserve your blades for cutting steel? And he said, go as slow as possible. You can use lubricant and all that as well, but he said, 
the main thing that matters is slow speed. The faster you go, the more you're going to blunt the teeth and damage them. Also on this, the light is very bright. Uh, you can switch it off. There's a switch up the top here, separate on the handle. And you might want to turn it off. It's so bright that if you've got any bare, shiny steel, it glares back on you and it makes it very hard to see your marking lines. So at least I've made it so you can turn it off, which is a very good thing overall. Yeah, very, very, very well thought out and good unit. Well, there you go. It can cut pretty straight, but it's all going to be down to practice and familiarisation. The saw is you know, fairly aggressive, even on a low setting, low speed setting, it goes through quite fast. So really, for absolute accuracy, I think Hacksaw is still well in front and used correctly. Then my old man showed me to use it with your finger like that, pointing in direction. Yeah, you should be able to cut very, very accurately. Follow your marks, your lines quite, quite closely. So I think Hacksaw is still the winner as far as absolute accuracy, but the, uh, the powered saw is pretty damn good. It's just that everything's happening a lot faster. So you could easily overshoot your marks if you weren't careful. But it certainly can do the job. It's a very, very good machine. Well, there you go. It's a pretty good unit. I like it a lot. It's very well made. That's, yeah, nice. And it's certainly got plenty of cutting capability. Anything five inch wide to five inch depth. That's pretty good. And... Uh, yeah, it certainly will do the job, no problem at all, bags of power. And the deciding factor would be the operator, how good they are as far as doing accurate cuts. Now, if you want one of these, um, the link is in the video description. There's also a, a code there for a further discount. You can buy this version for... $183 delivered in Australia. If you buy it with the base, it's $112 more, so it'll be $294 delivered. You can't buy the base separately. And so if you do want the base, buy the one with the base because you can't get the base separately for this. Even though it's the same saw, it bolts on with the same uh, Allen bolts in the same position that's the way they sell it so I'm just warning you yeah I think it's good very very good and certainly another fine machine for the arsenal in the uh, Zinazoo workshop okay I hope you enjoyed this got something out of it we'll see you next time cheers <laughs>